I'm going to be building a fully functioning PC where majority of the cables are invisible. And that is thanks to this, the B650M Project Zero. Where's the 24 pin? Where's the CPU power? Where's all the bottom IO, you may ask? Well, it is all located on the rear, making the cables completely invisible in the front of the PC. So let's get building. Today's video sponsor, Zimmerboard, is a go-to for all of your home server needs. With the Zimmerboard, you can set up and expand to 36 terabytes of personal cloud disk space with fast read and write speeds when connected via gigabit network and there is no reoccurring fee. Zimmerboard can also be turned into a hardware router, set up a VPN connection, run lightweight services like FTP server, or even set up a private access to your office computer. You can even run it as a Plex media server to stream your favorite movies or TV shows anywhere on all of your devices at 4K 60 hertz. My personal favorite is the file sharing capabilities. I can set up a large volume shared disk in the office, which we can share our video editing files with the team on multiple systems in real time. The Zimmerboard can even be your personal server for things like Minecraft. There are a few options of Zimmerboard, so if you'd like to learn more, I'll leave the links in the video description. And this is MSI's brand new case. It's kind of giving me height vibes, but this is the MAG or MAG Pano M100RPZ. So you can see it is that fish tank design, but it does have that angled section at the front there. So you've got basically a see-through case all the way around. And this is specifically designed to work with the Project Zero motherboard. But it'll be interesting to see the inside because I'm pretty sure it also works with standard motherboards. It also looks like it already comes with four fans. These ones have a reverse fan blade as well, which is great because we are gonna have three fans with the AIO cooler, which will be mounted up the top. So my goal for today is to really test out this motherboard to see whether or not I can see this becoming a more mainstream thing. I mean, we have the B650M Project Zero motherboard and with all the connectors being at the back, is this something that can be adopted and actually become a thing? I tell you what, if it does, it's gonna put all of the custom cable companies out of business. Now this particular motherboard is AM5. It is also DDR5 compatible and we can also fit two NVMe drives inside and it's got plenty of USB and features on the iPad but the main feature we're here to test out today is the rear cable connections. It is finally here guys. I have been waiting so long to do a Ryzen build. I've just not been able to afford a CPU and we finally got our hands on a Ryzen CPU. This is the only 7000 series CPU that we have. So we can finally do a build. <laughs> I'm so excited. So this is the Ryzen 7 7700X CPU. It is an eight core and 16 thread processor. And this PC is primarily gonna be made for gaming. But if we did wanna do multi-threaded tasks, of course we have enough cores and threads there to make it as efficient as possible. It is also unlocked, so we can have a go at overclocking as well. So I thought to myself, because this is just a gaming PC, we don't need too much storage. I think two terabytes is plenty. So we've got the Spatum M450 NVMe drive. It is a Gen 4 drive. And as I said, we do have two slots in the motherboard, so we can expand if we end up filling this. Now, of course, if we're gonna be installing games like Call of Duty, we all know that that takes up a lot of space. So it's good that we do have a little bit of extra room for future expansion if need be.
For our RAM, as you guys know, we do reuse a lot of our hardware here because we can't afford to just keep going out and buying parts. It is not sustainable. So we've got the Dominator Titanium First Edition RAM. This is pretty much one of our only two white sets of RAM that we have on hand. DDR5, of course, two sticks. So that's 7,200 megahertz running at CL34 timings. 32 gigs in total. And of course, I love the look of the Dominator Titaniums in white as well. Wait, why is there blood on the fan? I don't think I'm bleeding. Oh wait, I've got a small cut. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> I better get that cleaned up before we touch anything else. We are going a little bit different today. We're not actually gonna be custom water cooling this build. We're gonna be throwing in a 360 AIO cooler from MSI. It is the Core Liquid E360 in white. Now I haven't used one in such a long time, so it's actually gonna be great to see its performance. And then I wanna actually compare it to a bunch of PCs that I have laying around the studio that I've just completed that have a single 360 radiator in it. And once again, you can see the new branding from MSI, they've actually got yellow and core operated instead of red. It's pretty cool. Okay, this RAM definitely does not belong in this case. The cooler is actually touching it. It was about half a millimeter too tall, so it's not that bad. We did manage to kind of force the screws in, so we made it work. But if you are gonna get this case and go for RAM, uh, I believe the Dominator Titaniums are a little too high profile for this particular case. really have another white GPU on hand so I am just borrowing this but I think it's going to be the perfect fit for this build. After all it is a all white MSI build and this is the Gaming X Slim. An RTX 4070 is also a great GPU. It can do 4K gaming, 1440p and it has all of the features like DLSS3, ray tracing and reflex. It also has 12 gigs of VRAM so you can run a multi-monitor setup and it's going to be a great encoder for any video editors out there.
today because we are using a 4070 this 850 watt power supply should be plenty it's also ATX 3.0 compatible PCIe 5 ready so we've got our 16 pin connector actually built into the power supply itself and of course we are going for an all white build so I'm glad the power supply is also white fully modular as well and have you guys noticed the new kind of branding on here they've actually incorporated yellow into their designs now which is I think is pretty cool So it's not looking too bad. I do like the new design features of this. I did some real quick cable management, AKA you just shove it under the power supply shroud there. But for the most part, you can see that it's working quite well. Um, the gaps are actually in the motherboard tray there. So um, that's where the cables all plug in. The only problem is you get extra cable slack because you don't require the same amount of length. Not too much difference, but still enough for me to have to bunch up and shove under the power supply uh, cover there. But it looks pretty cool. I like it. I think this is a really cool concept. I struggle to understand why this case was not made for ATX motherboards as well. MATX is not really the most popular choice out there for the general consumer, but with this case and all fish tank cases being really popular at the moment for the general consumer, this one would have been one of the more cheaper ones on the market. Therefore, the general consumer would have a serious consideration for something like this. But majority of the market out there uses an ATX size motherboard. If you were to put an ITX motherboard in here, it would look super ugly because because then you've got all of the slits in the motherboard tray showing because that's where the backside of the cable connections all sit. Just my thoughts and my opinion, but with this MATX motherboard in there, it certainly does look clean. Now I actually built a PC in another fish tank style case that was just released and you can watch that video on screen right here.